For as long as I've been working with cameras and power tools, I've had this pipe dream of running my cameras on the power tool batteries. Larger external battery systems specifically for cameras do exist, but I've already got a bunch of big old batteries here. They're just meant for drills and saws instead of cameras. So if I can find a way to get these to work together, then I can stay all on one battery system and not have to spend a couple hundred bucks buying new stuff. My solution for longer battery life has been just plugging the camera into the wall, but that means dragging extra cables around whenever I move the camera and it only really works indoors. So my idea is to use that dummy battery, but instead of plugging it into the wall, plug it into a power tool battery. Now, obviously, if I just connected these wires up, it would completely kill my camera. The stock battery is 7.2 volts and the drill battery is 20 volts. To not fry the camera, I bought a couple cheap step-down converters on eBay. They were like five bucks a piece, and these should make the job fairly plug and play. Now, before we get too deep into this, I should provide a warning that I don't really know what I'm doing here. I just know the basics. Playing with electricity, there's always a potential for starting fires or frying your electronics. At the end of the day, I am trusting the life of my thousand dollar camera here to a cheap five dollar part. We've got 18.1 volt coming in, and I can press this button, and it'll change the readout to the output voltage, which is 17.6, and then by twisting this screw, it'll change and step down that voltage. Now, from what I understand, there's not a perfect number here. The battery puts out 7.2 volts, the wall adapter has a higher 8 volt output. I think that's higher to compensate for voltage dropping over a longer run of cable. From what I understand, being too low on voltage is probably safer than being too high in terms of permanent damage, but some of these newer Sony cameras run on up to 9 volts via USB, so I figured 8 would be a good number. I don't know, I'm just trying stuff. There's a reason I'm using my B camera as the test dummy here. Nothing to do but to find out, I guess. Turning on fine. <laughs> this is sweet. There you go. I've already got the camera running off a DeWalt battery, but obviously this is not practical. I need to come up with some way to actually mount this thing properly so it doesn't do that. With all the spooky electronic stuff out of the way, now I can just focus on making this a usable piece of gear. I've got two kinds of drill batteries I could work off of, some smaller DeWalts and some larger Harbor Freight batteries that are cheaper. From my very loose math, the 2 amp hour DeWalt should run the camera for about 7 hours and the 5 amp hour Bauer should run it for about 17, so I'm going to move forward on the Harbor Freight mount. I modeled up and printed a basic battery clip for the Bauer to go into. I wanted to get this part working correctly first, so I wouldn't have to reprint my entire adapter a bunch of times if my measurements were off. It doesn't clip in all the way. So I just need to adjust that little channel here that this falls into. Out of curiosity... Oh. It kinda almost fits the DeWalt. They have very similar dimensions, on the main clip at least. So it needs a little bit of a chamfer here, but other than that, the only thing keeping this adapter from working on both mounts is these little extra nubs here. So if I just take a little bit of material out here, this should work on both batteries. Alrighty, version two, let's see. Oh, just perfect on the Bauer. And the DeWalt. Sweet! It actually, it actually works on both and it clips in like very satisfying. With the specific measurements for the battery mount done, now I can get a little more freeform and add a box for the step-down converter to mount on top. From here on out, the exact measurements don't matter as much, so I did a quick and dirty 3D model and printed it off. All right, version three. So the wiring coming in from the battery has this little area to come through and solder up to the pins. Don't know how I'm gonna make those yet. And then the wiring going to the battery, I'll probably still use this terminal. There isn't like a ton of space for it. Probably just knock a hole in this wall and have this stick out a little bit like there. Okay, I printed off a really rudimentary 
lid for this thing with a cutout so I can still see the voltage. The surface quality on all these parts kind of sucks because I'm still dialing in ABS on my printer. Um, but I don't really care because I'm going to give this thing a paint job and might actually try to fill some of these layer lines. All right, let's make this thing less ugly. Lately, I've been approaching 3D printing as more of a starting point than an end product. You know, I had some issues with this print, trying out ABS for the first time, and I could have tweaked my settings, up the temperature, put it in a heat chamber, and I would have ended up with a much better print, I'm sure, but that would have been another eight hour wait on the print alone, plus more wasted filament. So my thought process was, you know, I've got a part here that's 90% done. If I can just melt together some of these layer lines, sand it back down, get it looking less terrible, I can get it to where I need it to be with 30 minutes of working on a failed print instead of eight hours of reprinting it. Maybe that's just my impatience though. I've heard that using Bondo thinned with acetone works pretty well for smoothing ABS. I've always wanted to try something like this and it makes total sense. For automotive purposes, Bondo can be thinned with acetone and acetone can be used to soften ABS, so it seems like the perfect combo, a thinned out body filler that adheres itself to the print by melting it a little bit. Only downside is both Bondo and acetone individually are very bad to breathe, so I'm sure the combination's even more toxic. So if you try this, do it outside or with really good ventilation and a respirator, that's what I did. I think this would work better in thin layers, but I did one thick layer that I'll sand down after it hardens. While I waited for that, I started to plan out how I was going to make the actual battery pins. My idea was to just use a piece of scrap steel I had laying around and solder some wires to that. I think usually they use some kind of alloy or something plated in copper. My options without buying anything were pretty much steel, aluminum, or copper. The extent of my thought process was copper would be too bendy and aluminum would be too hard to solder to, so I went with steel. I flattened out this offcut of angle steel because it was the piece I had that was closest to the thickness I wanted. Then I just cut out the little rectangles I needed to slot into the battery pins. I also drilled some tiny holes on the end for the wire to route to to make it a little easier to solder. Then I just rounded off the front face of the pins that's actually going to come into contact with the battery. And they slotted in pretty perfectly. Now you can just buy sets of these pins, I'm sure they're like a dollar, but you know, this took no more than 20 minutes to measure and cut out, beats shipping times. I dipped these in flux and put some solder on them before actually inserting them into the plastic part. This way I don't accidentally melt everything when I'm trying to actually wire it up. Then I just had a few things left before assembling the adapter and making it look pretty. First was making a slot for the power cord going into the camera. Then I need a way to attach the lid of this case. I decided to just melt some screw holes through each of the four corners. And I know there's probably plenty of you thinking, why didn't you just model that in instead of melting it in after? I have a couple reasons, all of questionable legitimacy. One, I just feel like melting screws through is going to be stronger than trying to model threads or holes. Two, it's one less measurement and one less component to potentially get wrong, causing me to redo the 3D print. And third, for me, it's just more of a fun design process, just printing something, starting to work on it, being able to interface it with the physical objects that it needs to interact with, making adjustments with physical tools instead of in the modeling software. Like for this project, I was figuring out where I was going to put the DC port, how I was going to wire the pins while the printer was already running. Then I was working on that case part while the lid was printing. It makes the process much less model something, then wait, then it's wrong, then model it again, then wait again, you know? I haven't even decided how this thing is going to mount to the camera yet. Now it's time for potentially the messiest part of this whole ordeal, melting the pins through the case. I did have like one millimeter slots built into the model here just so I would know where they'd go. And then I figured I'd just melt them through somehow no matter how messy it is and clean up the excess after. That way there's really solid contact and the pins won't move after they're set. Luckily for me, everything worked. I got the positioning pretty perfect and it all slotted in just fine. I drilled some tiny holes through where the pins come out into the main case, routed the wires through there and I printed off a tiny little cap for that section. With that, the adapter itself should be functionally done. I tucked everything into its place, screwed the cap on, and then gave it a quick test. 
It was cool seeing the concept work earlier with just the bare wiring, but having an actual adapter unit now is just so much more solid feeling. With that, I just have to figure out a sturdy way to mount the adapter block onto the camera. I'm gonna need some kind of bridge plate to connect it to the bottom, so I need some quarter 20 screw holes in the piece so it can actually be connected to things. I'm gonna be using threaded inserts, which are basically just a nut that can screw into a piece. There's a decent amount of empty space under these walls here because the battery is wider than the circuit board inside. So I just melted some holes deep enough for the threaded inserts and screwed them down in there while it was still hot, trying to keep them as level as possible. After cleaning those up, I gave the whole thing a coat of paint. I went with like a ultra matte sand color. Stuck all the hardware back in, gave the pins a final clean off with acetone. Could have used another layer of that Bondo smoothing, but it doesn't need to look pretty. With that, my drill battery camera powering solution is done. Just set the voltage, screw everything together, and mount it to the camera. I stuck a tripod plate on the bottom, obviously, but then I got a kind of cool idea. I put a tripod mount on the top, which will allow me to take it on and off the camera a lot easier. There's nothing I gotta do to turn it on, just plug in the dummy battery into the adapter, switch the camera itself on, and it starts getting power. It's a pretty simple, nice little compact rig. The added bonus of the extra mounting plate is that I can basically just leave the thing as a tripod attachment and whichever camera I put on, plug that into the battery, as long as the cameras are the same voltage. So there you go, that's the setup. It actually works so much nicer than I thought it would. It adds a really nice counterweight to the thing too for handheld shots. I guess that's true with any battery, but this was a lot cheaper. And the fact that it's possible to dual mount this thing is pretty sick. This solution also works uniquely well for my use case because if I'm filming a project outside, I'm cutting wood, I'm welding on my car or something, all of a sudden my camera runs on the same battery as my angle grinder and my circular saw, which is also just cool. <laughs> Realistically, I think this only makes sense to do if you already own power tool batteries and on devices that you're willing to maybe lose. You know, I don't want to influence you to do something stupid. You could probably start a fire with this or it would be real easy to kill your camera if you set the voltage wrong. I haven't run my battery life test yet, but what I will say is I've been shooting on this thing for the past couple days, random projects here. I even took it out to a park the other day to test out a drone with some buddies. Probably a good few hours of shooting total, and it's still on max battery life, all three bars. So I'm just gonna start rolling on this thing and we'll see tomorrow how long it actually goes for. I set up a test with my two sizes of batteries versus the stock Sony battery. With all my normal settings constantly recording, the stock camera went for three hours and 11 minutes. On my DIY adapter, the DeWalt 2 amp hour went for about twice as long at 6 hours and 2 minutes. Then the Bauer 5 amp hour battery recorded all the way through the night to the next morning, continued until hitting the Sony record limit of a 13 hour clip, at which point I cleared the SD card and continued rolling. As I'm recording this voiceover and finishing the video, it is still going. It's almost at 15 hours. <laughs> it should end soon. Oh, it literally just died while I was setting up this shot. Huh. Okay, so the grand total was 15 hours, 18 minutes, and 13 seconds. I've been monitoring temperatures through the whole test, because in theory the voltage regulator puts off some amount of heat. The most I saw on the six hours of recording with the DeWalt was uh, 85. It's about 75 Fahrenheit in here. Right now I'm seeing... 91 at peak. I'm very pleased with those results. So there you have it. 20 volt batteries going down to 8 volt. We're getting roughly 3 hours of record time per amp hour of battery. With the 15 hour 20 minute record time, I can basically record, have the camera on for an entire day, just charge it up at night. I'll probably do this same kind of thing to power these lights so I don't have to have these plugged into the wall all the time. There's all kinds of stuff you can probably do with this concept and at the end of the day, I used batteries I already had, spent $5 on a voltage regulator. Now I've got all day battery life and the camera rig is just even more ridiculous looking now. I love it. 
that's the project. I'm sure I'll revisit this down the road with an even more improved version. Also, new thing I'm trying out. On this channel, I try to keep everything story focused so you can follow along and enjoy projects even if you're not interested in the particular subject matter. One of my goals is to show people how accessible different mediums can be instead of just covering it in technical jargon. But also that does mean for projects like this, there's details that get glossed over that might be useful if you're actually trying to do this project yourself. So I've opened up a second channel where there's a companion video to this one out right now if you want more of the technical details and specifications of things. The new channel will be Evan Monsma 2. It'll be linked right here somewhere. And as always, if you'd like to help support the stuff I'm making, you can donate or become a member on evanmonsma.com. Thank you to all the members that are already on there, and thank you for your time.